Hello Mr. Kothari. So today we are going to discuss on the topic of uh, fixed income oriented investment options for NRIs in India. So let's move on with the first question. Sure. Uh, fixed income as an option of investment is important for NRIs. What are fixed income options for investment by NRIs in India? Uh, there are a few options which are traditionally used. Uh, the first being deposits. Uh, with uh, the banks. Uh, in these uh, deposits, there are three types of deposits which a non-resident Indian can go for. The first is a NRO deposit. So you can have an NRO savings account and you can have an NRO fixed deposit. But the uh, disadvantage of that NRO account is that the incomes of the fixed deposits or the savings bank account, which is an NRO account, is liable to taxation and TDS, uh, which is uh, there in respect of that uh, NRO account. So, the another option is deposits in an NRE account, which is a non resident external account, where the savings account can be held as an NRE account, as well a fixed deposit account can also be held in an NRE mode. So the interest in respect of this NRE deposit account is completely tax free. So there is no hassle of even the tax deduction at source. And the third option with the uh, banking deposits is FCNR account. So at times non-resident feel that uh, my deposits, if they are in Indian rupee, then I will be exposed to a depreciation of the Indian rupee if at all it is plan if he is looking at. So there he can place a deposit in foreign currencies according to whatever he desires. See if he wants that my deposits should be in US dollars then he can opt for that. Then there would be a specific rate at which US dollar deposits under FCNR would be accepted by the Indian bank. So the deposit would be dollar denominated. Or if he thinks that I want to have it in some other major currencies, then he can opt for it. Each currencies would have a different rate of interest. So that is as far as the banking side of uh, this fixed income options are concerned. The other options are uh, mutual funds, which are debt based mutual funds. And the third and one of the most important options which can be used as a tool of retirement planning is going for insurance plan which would guarantee a fixed rate of return. So that fixed rate of return could be over a period of 10 years, 15 years, even 20, 25 years. So for a period of as long as 20, 25 years, the rate of interest in respect of those plans which are guaranteed income insurance plans would be fixed. So these are the major options as far as fixed return uh, investments for non-resident sectors. Okay, uh, so we got an insight about the fixed uh, income oriented options. So basically you say that traditionally NRIs have large amount of fixed deposit in NRO and NRE account. So is it a good idea? <laughs> uh, yes, traditionally as you rightly said that there is a large amount of uh, NRO and NRE fixed deposits which uh, the non-residents uh, have been uh, having with the banking system. But then one needs to look at that, what is the objective of my investment? There is one set of non-resident Indians, uh, maybe say a non-resident Indian based somewhere in Africa, somewhere in the Middle East. There he feels that rather than uh, my funds being in those countries where right now I'm working or I'm having some business, for purposes of safekeeping, I want to have my these funds in India. So their NRO, NRE fixed deposits are a good option because safekeeping India is definitely a safe economy where he can park his funds in a safe way. But if my objective is growth and returns, then I should look beyond NRO, NRE fixed deposits. The reason is very simple, but at times it is a little difficult to understand because what happens is that when a non-resident Indian 
comes to India and looks at the rates of interest offered by the Indian banks, mm -hmm. he is definitely attracted. Mm -hmm. He would feel that, oh, I am getting what, 6%, 7%, 8% rates of interest, which is quite attractive when they are in an economy which would pay an interest of what, 1% or 0 or 2%. So that seems to be very attractive. But then there is a concept of a real rate of interest and a nominal rate of interest. 8% which we are looking at or 6% which we are looking at the rate of interest which a bank in India would offer is a nominal rate of interest from which we need to deduct the inflation prevalent in the country. So from 8 we should deduct that 5% inflation which India is running. So the real rate of return is 3%. And when I'm, say maybe I'm in the US and there the rate of interest is 2%, but US in those days maybe uh, is running with an inflation of 1%. My uh, rate of, real rate of return is 1%. So then I need to look at that the differential between the real rates is the kind of arbitrage which is available. So the comparison has not to be between 8 and 2. It has to be between that 2-3% and 1% or something. So we need to compare the real rates of return. So we need to assess from this perspective that what is my objective, safekeeping or returns. So if returns is the objective, maybe investing in fixed income options in India, even in a NRE deposit, which is a tax-free deposit, might not be a great idea. So then what would be the, what are the tax provisions of this fixed income oriented investment and what would be that? True. Uh, always uh, tax provisions are very important yes. when it comes to uh, fixed income investments because uh, here the net of tax return is what it really matters. Mm -hmm. So as I was uh, discussing about or uh, detailing about the bank related uh, uh, deposits which uh, which could be used as a tool of investments in fixed income uh, then the NRO account deposits as I said they are taxable and the interest in respect of those accounts is taxable at the slab rate then NRE fixed deposits or NRE savings bank account the interest is absolutely tax free without any upper limit and it is not calculated for the uh, that two or two lakh fifty thousand basic threshold as well. They are completely exempted. They are exempted under Section Ten. So uh, they they would not fall in that two lakh fifty thousand uh, threshold as well. Then, as far as the FCNR deposits are concerned, they are also absolutely tax free. Then, if uh, one goes for uh, an option of uh, investing into uh, mutual funds which are into debt based mutual funds then uh, if those mutual funds are held for a period uh, till three years then the uh, whatever is the return is taxable at the slab rate and if they are held for a period beyond three years then it would qualify for long term capital gains and it would be taxed at a flat rate of 10 percent in case of non-resident Indians for residents it's different but for non-residents they are taxed at a flat rate of 10%. As far as the uh, fixed income insurance policies, as I had uh, said in the kind of different options, uh, if those, uh, the, those uh, insurance uh, policies are having uh, a, a sum assured, which is 10 times of its premium, then they would qualify for exemption under Section 1010B of the Indian Income Tax Act. So whatever are the returns would be completely tax free. Okay, so we did get the idea about tax provisions. Now, what would be the provision if an NRI, uh, provision of remittance if an NRI do invest in such investments? Okay, so uh, as far as remittance is concerned, uh, if those investments are into NRE or FCNR uh, based deposits, yes. they are absolutely, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can remit it at any point of time, uh, the time when the non-resident desires. So they are completely free. Then if there is a balance of a NRO account, then uh, under the Reserve Bank of India scheme, under which uh, to the extent of 1 million US dollar per person per year, 
can be transferred from the NRO account to the NRE account or outside of India, uh, provided the taxes which are due in respect of the monies which are contemplated to be transferred is paid and uh, uh, there is a small formality which is to be carried out uh, by certification by a chartered accountant and then the banks would transfer those monies. Then if they are uh, investments uh, into uh, mutual funds which are debt based mutual funds uh, wherever the funds have originated from say if they originated from an NRO account then it will go to the NRO account and then it can be transferred under that 1 million dollar scheme. And if those funds have originated from the NRE account, then it can go to the NRE account and then the transfer is absolutely seamless. When it comes to the insurance policy, which is a fixed return policy, uh, there, uh, if those premiums in respect of those policies are paid out of uh, NRE account uh, deposits or NRE account balances or by way of remittances in India, then those amounts which uh, are received on maturity in respect of those policies are freely transferable irrespective of whatever is the $1 million limit. So $1 million limit would not come into play. But if those amounts or premiums are paid from the NRO account and whatever are the proceeds which are received from that uh, insurance policy, uh, then we can go for the benefit or rather the root of that $1 million scheme of the Reserve Bank of India. So this is in so far as the remittance of funds are concerned. Okay. So we pretty much got the idea on the topic of fixed income oriented investment. So thank you so much for enlightening us on this topic. My pleasure.